Hi, this is Henning from FredMorals.com. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how we can do a simple modeling, such as the one we're seeing in front of us. It's going to be using a fair, a fair set of fundamental modeling techniques. And while this is a fairly easy model to do for somebody advanced, if you're a beginner, doing something like this can be tricky, at least getting a clean, nice result, uh, which is fast. As with a lot of other tutorials, uh, this is uh, a universal technique and it will you can do it in pretty much any application. Uh, but we're using Maya here now. Uh, I use a custom display marking menu, which means I can isolate objects, I can hide and hide the grid and stuff like that. Um, so, but if I'm using that one, I will be talking about where you can find it in the actual UI. So let's just move this guy to the side here and let's get started. First thing we do is gonna go make a cube. Uh, the way to you create primitives is genuinely not by going under your uh, under your shelf or to your create polygon tab. Uh, the fastest way is by far to using use your marking menus. Meaning shift right mouse button and you can create a cube. Uh, like this. It's really nice and handy. Super fast. Um, the main technique for this tutorial here is going to be that we have a cube and we have a cylinder. Don't worry about what I'm doing now. I'll explain it all later on. And we're basically going to use a cylinder to get this nice cylindrical shape here. If you start messing around, we're trying to cut out the cylinder without using an actual cylinder, you're in trouble really quickly because it's very hard to actually get a perfectly spherical shape if you don't have something to snap it to. Uh, so let's get started. We're just going to create um, something like this. Uh, and then we're basically going to delete everything but uh, this face here. But first, let's split it in two. Uh, there's several ways of splitting something in half. Uh, a really quick way is to use uh, the following trick. Hold down Control, right mouse button, edge ring utilities, and edge ring and split. You can do this fairly easily after a while. Uh, once you get used to it. And you can also just hit the G key to repeat the action. And it's going to split it perfectly in half. Let's just undo this. I only want one split. And then just delete this and delete everything else as well. Uh, you can also just select this guy and hold on the shift key to select inverse. To delete it, I just hit control X, which is basically just a cut command. Uh, it's a little bit dirty and if you have a, a big piece of geometry, I don't recommend doing it because it's basically copying into memory. But if you just have something simple like this, it's totally fine. Next up, uh, we're just going to move this guy up here and scale down a little bit. And that's fine. Next up, we're going to create a cylinder by shift right mouse button to the right. And then hold down the J key to just, uh, at first the E key to rotate, like here. And then the J key to, to snap it to every nth angle, which is defined here. If you hold down um, if you enable discrete rotate by holding in a J key, you can set the, s the step size to 15, or that's what it's default to. Uh, for this, we're going to be using 12 segments. 12 segments should be enough for us here. Uh, we basically want to use this as a guide for cutting out the geometry here. So I, w I want this edge here to align perfectly with this edge here, the one you're seeing here. Uh, you could of course just do this manually or you could do it the better way which is snapping it. The way we do this is let's just go to our, normally this would be a front view, for me it's a right view because I'm sloppy. And um, just, hit, just hit the D key to move your pivot. And you can just move your, uh, let's actually just delete this first so it's easy to see what we're doing. We just want one fourth of it. So just, just delete all of this. Uh, and go into object mode again. And now just hold down the V key and just snap it to this bottom edge here. If your pivot is somewhere off like here and your item is like this, whatever, uh, you can just hold on the D key, move it here and snap the pivot down 
then hold it on a V key and snapping it down again. This is something you do all the time and it's really handy and fast. So um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut, uh, first let's just make sure I don't have any junk here. I only want the front face, control X, that's fine. And I'm gonna use that multi-cut tool. Multi-cut tool can also be found under your modeling toolkit if you're on 2014. This is 2015. So let's just cut here. You really don't have to be accurate. I'm actually not gonna be accurate here on purpose just to show you what I'm doing. Sorry about that. I accidentally cancel it. Let's just cut it. One, two, three. Okay, hit enter and you can now have it. Now just select these and just snap them back so it fits the cylinder. Hold on the V key. And there we go. Now you can pretty much just delete the cylinder. Just move it a little bit back so we can select it, then delete it. And now we want to connect. Uh, and now, now we want to, we need to connect uh, this out here so it's not an end gun. But first we're just gonna select it all and then use the bevel tool to just create like a nice little bevel here. You can do this by a cut key. I have it to Alt B, or you can use this under bevel um, or mesh editing tools under modeling toolkit, or just shift right mouse button and then just drag to the right, like like so. Bevel edge. So that's pretty nice. Now just delete this guy, and now we just want to connect this up. Use the multi cut tool again. I've mapped it to hot key. Uh, which is super handy. It's Alt C for me. And approximately there. Just need to get this end gun as well. And that's fine. That's good enough for now. Uh, now we need to do the other side as well. Uh, so just duplicate it around, it's really easy. Hold on a D key and just snap it here. Uh, this way we can use the mirror feature. And uh, yeah, just mirror it over. The way we mirror it over is by holding shift right mouse button. As you can see, I'm very, I'm very marking menu focus. It just makes everything faster. Uh, and then you have something here called mirror geometry. This takes a little time to get used to. You basically just have to look down on your axes here. Uh, you see this little widget down here? Uh, now you can see which axis it's active on. So you can see this is going in a positive set direction. So let's just do this and um, positive set. And there we go. You see a problem though, it's merging It's merging the, um, the cut as well, but we don't want that because um, it's, it's merging to a distance of which is too high. So just go on to the, the, the node current, which is just created. And let's just merge threshold down. And there we go. And it's looking mighty fine. Um, actually, before we did this, we should have just added a loop here for it as well, because we need that now. But it doesn't matter, it's quick to add a loop. And uh, now let's just give it some depth. Select everything, extrude, and just move it inwards. I just moved it on the wrong axis, so it was flipping the normals. Um, th that would have been an easy fix, just by going under your, um, just by going under um, normals and reverse normals. So let's just add a loop here again, and loop there. So then it's gonna look nice. Uh, we can also just bend it so it has like a nice little bend like this guy has. Uh, this is very easy to do. We just add a bend to it. But first, let's just add a little loop there and loop there to sharpen it up. And there we go. It looks nice and sub -D. The problem is now if you add a bend to this, it doesn't have enough geometry to actually do much. Uh, so we could, of course, manually just add loops or we can just uh, add a smooth to this, which you can find there. And now it has plenty of geometry. 
at least enough to bend properly. Uh, so the way we bend stuff is using our bend uh, operation, which you can find on our animation, or bend deformer rather. Animation, uh, create deformer, non-linear, and bend. And now you see this little strange widget popping up. And by default it's doing nothing. Uh, go to the inputs and just set a curvature of something like 30 degrees. And you can see it's doing something. Uh, it's bending the wrong way, which means either we just move everything around, we just move the model around afterwards, or you just set it to negative 30. Uh, sorry about that. Negative um, 30. And now we can just move it down as well a little bit. Let's just move it down to, to the bottom point here. We can just snap it so it fits. There we go. Uh, we can set this to um, even further, minus 45. And that's it. That's a nice little bendy thingy. Uh, add a subdivision to this, and that's it. So very simple, a very simple little trick, but this is something you're going to do a lot of. Uh, where you, uh, it's basic technique where you, you need to cut out a perfectly cylindrical hole or circle hole into something, and you use use some kind of hold out geometry to use the basic shape, and you just snap it back to it. So I hope this is useful, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact us and check out our other tutorials. Thank you.